autonomic dysfunction is a condition that refers to malfunctioning of the autonomic or involuntary nervous system. It is a serious condition and one that is prevalent among those with spinal cord injuries. Here at i -Cord, we are very lucky to have a passionate researcher studying this very issue. My laboratory is uh, dealing predominantly with autonomic dysfunctions that are very common after spinal cord injury. Uh, one of the, I believe, major questions which I'm trying to answer for many years working in this area, how cardiovascular control is affected by spinal cord injury and how we can help people with spinal cord injury to live better when they have these devastating uh, dysfunctions in cardiovascular control. Among them, one of the most common for clinicians and people with spinal cord injury, condition known as autonomic dysreflexia. This condition is quite devastating for people with spinal cord injury. And significant part of my research in the last almost 30 years, I devoted to understand why this condition occurred and how we can help people with spinal cord injury to manage this condition. That's a, one of the common methods which we're using both in animal and human studies is measuring arterial blood pressure. As well, we're using in a basic science laboratory a variety of tissue techniques investigating what's happening with neurons, synapses, fibers. We're using some electrophysiological assessment. As well as we're doing a lot of qualitative research using questionnaires. It's a very important tool of assessment of people's dysfunctions, their personal feeling and experiences, and just regular gistology, uh, cutting tissue, looking under the microscope, either electron microscope or confocal microscope. My laboratory for the first time initially showed what's happening with spinal sympathetic preganglionic neurons. And lately in my laboratory, we start to focus on changes within the ganglia and blood vessels. This is a peripheral autonomic nervous system. And we found significant alteration in structure as well as function. Just recently, we have very interesting findings with respect of heart function. We found that significant changes in morphology of the heart occurring after the spinal cord injury as well as uh, functional changes in the heart. In the human part of the investigation, showed that there is a significant correlation between the severity of injury to the autonomic pathways, and this is not correlate well with the severity of injury of motor pathways. What is exciting for me as a clinician that we already can use significant amount of data that we found in animals to bring to the human laboratory and to test if our findings are correct and if these findings help us actually right now already to manage people with spinal cord injury. The clinical trial which we're starting in the next few months is effect of exercise using either low extremity exercise or upper extremity exercise to change cardiovascular metabolic dysfunctions, which at the present time, as I mentioned, the number one killer for people with spinal cord injury. Number one cause of death for people with spinal cord injury is the cardiovascular dysfunctions. And at the present time, when we compare the age between the SCI individuals who developing spinal cord, uh, developing cardiovascular dysfunctions and able-bodied individuals, we found that SCI people with spinal cord injury dying and developing these dysfunctions at much younger age. There is obviously uh, causes for this. They cannot move, they cannot exercise, as well as individuals without spinal cord injury. But what also our research demonstrating that there are other underlying causes that we probably can alter and change in order to help them.